Ah, yes. The eight-stringed guitar. Boomer's favorite object of hate. Metalcore Bros Avenue to playing bad music. A semi-misunderstood instrument, arguably. What's up, Internet? It is your pal, Drew Sif. This is the first volume in a series which I'm tentatively calling Do It Better. So for today's first episode of Do It Better, we're going to take an eight string and we're going to do a couple little secret maneuvers to make it sound good. I don't know what the fuck. For our drums, we are using the Modern Metal Easy X. It's the Will Putney library. I have it loaded into Superior Drummer 3. Um, it is all routed out and mixed, and it sounds like this. On our mix bus, we have an SSL emulation with a high shelf and a low shelf. Our high shelf is at 9K with a 6 dB boost. Our low shelf is around 150 Hertz with a 3 dB boost. We have a very, very small amount of harmonic distortion, kind of emulating the sound of pushing the console a little extra hard. On our master bus, we have FabFilters Pro C. Uh, emulating an SSL bus style compressor. Got an attack of about three milliseconds and a quick release of around 50. What we're doing is essentially just ducking the whole mix when the snare drum hits. After that, we have got a lovely little instance of Submission Audio's Flatline 2. It's a master limiter with a whole bunch of smartness under the hood. <laughs> it's the technical term. Um, so pretty much what I do is I just throw on the put it in H preset, uh, drop my ceiling to negative one, and then I pull my threshold down so that I'm getting a gain reduction of two to three dB. For this, we are using one of David Levy's tracks from the Doom Eternal soundtrack. It's a very sick track. It just happens to, in my opinion, commit sort of one of the cardinal sins of eight-string guitar tone, which actually is kind of what brought on this whole video. So, great track. Don't come after me. Sorry if you're watching this, dude. Uh, as always with all mixing decisions and basically everything that has anything to do with art, these are my opinions. Um, so if you don't agree, that is perfectly fine. So the first thing we're going to do, making our eight string sound better, is work on our bass tone. <laughs> because bass uh, is one of the most important parts of a good guitar tone. So our bass here is Submission Audio's Umansky bass, and we are running an instance of Soothe by Oak Sound. What that is gonna do is just pull out some of that extra whistly junk. All we're doing is pulling out a little, a bunch of mid, and that gives us this. Not bad, but we can do better. Instead of just a straight up DI bass, I want to run it through one of my favorite plugins for bass, which is Softube's This Word One. I don't want to say it because I don't want YouTube to come for me. And the cool thing about this plugin is that these little divots on the user interface or whatever you want to call them, the little markings, are basically just the perfect place for your tone. The one exception is that because we're running this amp on its own, I've boosted the bass knob just a little bit so we get a little bit more oomph. Here is our bass with an amp. getting there. Maybe we want a little bit more oomph and a little more clarity. So what we're going to do is split our bass into two different tracks. So now we have our bass sub and our bass two. Uh, 
Uh, so on our base subtrack, what we're doing is pulling out the super low stuff and the higher stuff. And what I find with a lot of bass uh, recordings is from about 100 to 300 hertz, you get a little bit of kind of a woof sort of a thing going on. So I pull that down. So that gives us this. Sorry, phone users, you just heard nothing, but it's there, I promise. And so the idea behind that is we now have our own little volume control of our sub notes. On top of that, we're going to mix in our amp from earlier, but now we changed a couple of little settings there. We turned our bass back down and then we've changed our mic selections. And that gives us this. I'm going to throw an EQ on it and I'm going to cut everything below 400 hertz out. And then I'm going to clean up a little bit of whistling up here, as you can see. And then I'm cutting everything roughly above 8K out because it's sort of, it's a bunch of stuff you're not really going to hear. And you're pretty much just taking up the space that your cymbals want to use. So when we blend those together, we get this. And in the whole mix. I tend to prefer having my bass in the same octave. Once you hit about F sharp, I like playing my bass in the same octave as the eight string. I went ahead and pulled it up. <laughs> But sometimes when you're shifting your bass up that octave, you lose those nice sub frequencies. So what we're going to do is put them back in with a lovely little plugin called Sub Destroyer. So this is essentially an extra special featured sine wave generator or triangle or square or saw, as you can see. So we're going to add that low octave back in. <laughs> phone users you just heard nothing again so we have just a little bit of distortion on it and a little bit of harmonic enhancement and when we put those together we get a little bit more oomph our next move is sending our bass out to the mix bus and also doing a little bit of EQ work here, pulling out a little bit of the wolf stuff, boosting our mids a little bit, and then pulling out some of those whistles again. And that gives us this. <laughs> now you might notice that sounds a little strange. And that is because we are also sidechain compressing our bass to our kick drum. So when the kick drum hits, we get a super quick little spiky dip in our kick. It just makes room for our kick drum to hit a little bit harder. So that takes care of our bass. Let's move on to guitars. We're going to turn our guitars up just a little bit, kind of listen again. Now we're in more normal mix territory. My big complaint with a lot of eight string guitar tones is it sounds very, very throaty. And sometimes just because of the pickup placement on the guitar, or sometimes it's because you're using extra dead sounding strings, or you're using a bass string for whatever terrible reason, your, your throaty guitar with your, your dead strings gives you this kind of sound. You get a lot of that. 
just this like very flubby for the sake of it. Here is our amp sim here. Very standard 5150 kind of thing. Nothing particularly wild happening there, no EQ, etc., etc. et cetera. So what we're gonna do is pull that out and then boost up our sort of pick attack frequencies. I know this is exactly the opposite of what Buster says to do. And Buster, you can fight me, bro. <laughs> so that gives us this. Let's do a little bit of general EQ here. So I'm pulling out a bunch of that low end because doing that little dip there kind of left us with the sub frequencies, which I didn't particularly want. And then I'm pulling out a little bit of whistle stuff here and then getting rid of the, the top stuff that once again is just going to bite into your cymbal territory. A very little bit of a mid boost and a little bit of a presence boost. And that gives us this. I didn't show it here because not everybody is going to have this plugin, but what I would do with uh, Pro-Q is I would use the dynamic mode for the EQ so that it just kind of takes care of the, the palm mute bloom, but you keep some of that low end. But... I wanted to keep it to something that everybody could use just in case you didn't have that tool. Those are your bigger steps uh, in terms of if you have a guitar with pickups that are not necessarily the best or you're trying to do sort of a rescue on a guitar tone that you can't you can't do anything about it, you can't re-record it, et cetera, et cetera. That little pull out there around around the low mids to the high bass. I don't think anybody says high bass, but we'll go with it. However, if you have time to re-record and you have the budget to get yourself some new pickups, I would highly, 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 highly recommend grabbing yourself some different pickups. So this is recorded with my double slit custom eight string with bare knuckle aftermaths. This is my like go-to just mojo, absolute angry growl guitar. I adore the sound out of this guitar. I just, I don't even know how to explain it. So this is the same amp settings and no EQ. Those pickups make a huge, huge difference. So moving on from there, you're saying, okay, that's cool, but I want to make it sound even better. And here is my secret for you. We're going to track the guitar again. So we now have two guitar tracks per side. These two new tracks, we are going to distort the ever-loving crap out of. Neural DSP's archetype Rabia using the fuzz. That gives you this. saturating the crap out of our guitar tone so that we just have this sort of constant wall of sound happening which can fill in the cracks that our lower gain guitar tone leaves behind a more generally sort of glued together nice sound and you get the clarity of your lower gain but also the super angry growl for the chugs and the palm mutes from an overly distorted guitar tone and that gives you this
it's subtle, but it does make, I believe, a pretty big difference. Let's take a look at a couple of other production decisions you can make that will elevate your guitar tone as well. If you're coming here knowing the Doom Eternal soundtrack already, you pretty much know what's about to happen. But if not, we are programming a little synth to play our guitar line with us. And that's going to sound like this. This is Fab Filters Twin 2 with just one of the presets that it comes with. I'm boosting a little bit of mid using JST's Pixelator. I think that's probably to add a little top end. Yep. You throw that all together. Cool, so let's go whole hog now and let's add a whole bunch of other fun little production bits here. So we've got this nice little pulse sound. And that is gonna add a little bit of movement, a little bit of texture. I've found that throwing in stuff like that sort of adds a little bit of imminence. On top of that, uh, we have the siren sound that sounds like a siren from the end of the movie Alien. And then one of my favorite contact instruments. This is Rust 2 from Sound Iron. Basically, they just went and recorded themselves hitting the crap out of a bunch of metal stuff, <laughs> pulling out a little bit of bass and then boosting up the mid. And that is sort of a snare reinforcement trick. On top of that, we can go in and give our drums a little bit of love, get a little bit of fancy, a little bit of fancy with our programming. And if we put all of that together, we get... Ta -da. Now, there actually is one more thing that I wanted to cover, but it only occurred to me while recording this. And this one is pretty simple, actually. But I want to show you what the difference picking hard or not can make. I'm going to retrack this guitar here, and I'm going to play it way too gently. And we're going to see what effect that has. Here is a pretty clear difference. Versus, this is the same guitar, but playing at my normal <laughs> hardness, which is exceptionally hard for most others. And just for the sake of it, underplayed. Here is our heavily played. And here is our exceedingly heavily played. As you can hear, I'm hitting it so hard that it's actually like messing up the sustain of the notes. So, you know, everything in moderation, right? All right, uh, let's go talk to that Drew over there. Nothing is sponsored in this video, so all of the products and plugins and et cetera, et cetera, that I'm talking up are just things that I like myself. Um, that being said, if you like the bass tones, I have a lovely little affiliate link for Submission Audio. You can give a little click on. It helps me out and it helps you out. So if that's something you're interested in, 
The tone hunt is a journey that myself and I believe most guitarists will be on until the end of time. This probably is not gonna be how I feel exactly about guitar tones even within a year from now. But that's the beauty of this. We're on this ride together. We're going together. You get it? It's like we're on a ride, like a car. If you want to become a member of my Patreon or my YouTube channel, you can do that right down below. If you want to check out merch, you can do that, whatever. If you have any super cool eight string suggestions for tone or playing or anything like that, chuck them down below. Let's talk about it. Now that we've mastered and harnessed the great uh, secrets of guitar string technology, Perfect eight string guitar tone. How about you go check out this video? You better do it. I mean, you don't have to do anything, but like, imagine what you could, what you might be missing out on if you don't click on that video right there. Just terrible. Oh, the FOMO is horrible. We're gonna check out a couple of techniques on how to make your eight string not as bad as it was before. <laughs> we're gonna take a we're we're gonna take a check out a look and a see how to do it better. <laughs> 